In this video, we'll talk about and troubleshoot some pass through tunnel down situations. We'll be talking specifically about simple pass through tunnels only, such as those used for internet breakout. Third party IPsec tunnels will be discussed in another video. We'll list common reasons tunnels might go down, talk about how to define the troubleshooting scope, discuss how pass through tunnels provide internet access, and we'll do some live troubleshooting to bring it all together. Pass-through tunnels can be down for various reasons, including being administratively down, the related WAN interface is down or misconfigured, the next hop is unreachable, circuit failure, misconfigured IPSLA, DNS issue resolving the IPSLA tracker, a firewall dropping IPSLA probes. A simple pass-through tunnel isn't really a tunnel, so it doesn't have the same inherent properties available to track its state, like an underlay does. There aren't IP addresses at each end, so we need another method to determine whether it can be used or should be disqualified. This is where the IPSLA feature comes in. Also, pass-through tunnels can be up and available, but flows might take a different path. We'll look into how the business intent overlay configuration influences flow behavior. If a pass through tunnel is down, we may be alerted to it by an alarm, or perhaps users reporting internet access problems. Pass through tunnels don't show us down with a critical alarm like an underlay or overlay does. The only exception to that is if a pass through tunnel has been set to admin down state. Generally, you'll see a warning alarm reported by the IPSLA monitoring service. To define the troubleshooting scope, let's see how many IPSLAs are showing us down on monitoring alarms and how many appliances are reporting it. If many or all appliances are reporting the same problem, it could be an issue with the global IPSLA configuration. If it's just one appliance or perhaps a small number of appliances, it may be an individual circuit or site issue. The information from monitoring alarms helps us understand the scope so we can focus our investigations accordingly. We can also examine monitoring flows. If a user or users are reporting problems reaching a destination, we can filter on their IP address to see what's happening. Here we can see a flow has been policy dropped. The detail screen shows it reached the end of the preferred policy order and was dropped. Let's briefly discuss how pass through tunnels provide internet access and the process a flow goes through. First, a flow has to be defined as either an internal or internet flow. This is done using the internal subnets table on config business intent overlays. Click either of these pencils, they both take you to the same place. Internet traffic is defined as any traffic that does not match the internal subnets listed here, which are by default all the RFC 1918 private subnets. If you have public IP ranges that you route over your SD WAN overlays, you may also have those subnets listed here in addition to the default private subnets. Listing those public subnets here will cause Edge Connect to treat them like any other internal subnet. Once the flow is determined to be an internet flow, it is then subject to the preferred policy order, which defines what to do with the flow. In our example, we have internet breakout at the top of the list, backhaul second, and if both of those fail, the flow is dropped. The next thing that happens is a pass through tunnel is selected based on the overlay the flow matched and the breakout traffic configuration settings. Each pass through tunnel is monitored by an IPSLA, which sends a ping or HTTP probe through the WAN interface out to the internet and waits for a reply. By default, there are three destinations checked a host called SP IPSLA, which we provide in the cloud, and two well known public DNS server IPs. Only one of them has to respond for the path to be deemed valid. If there is no reply from all probe destinations, the tunnel is marked as up, IPSLA disabled, and disqualified from use. So if the pass-through tunnel is up, 
meaning at least one of the IPSLA destinations responded, internet traffic egresses via the relevant WAN interface. If no pass-through tunnels are available, the flow drops down to the next item in the preferred policy order list. Here this is backhaul mode. Edge Connect will look for a route in Config Routes to match the flow's destination IP address. This will usually be a default 0000 route, and assuming one is being advertised by another Edge Connect appliance, backhaul flows are then placed into the appropriate overlay for routing to the advertising peer Edge Connect appliance. If no route can be found, the flow moves on to the next item in the preferred policy order list and, in our case, would be dropped. Let's begin some live troubleshooting. Note that some of the transitions shown here have been accelerated. It may take several minutes for your orchestrator to report alarms clearing. We'll start by looking at the monitoring alarms page. Be sure to have no appliances selected on the tree so we can see all alarms. If you have lots of other alarms present, you can try putting the keyword down in the search box on the top right to filter out some of the noise. Which appliances are reporting IPSLA warnings or tunnels down? All appliances are reporting warnings, but B1 is also reporting a tunnel is down. This suggests that we have a global issue and an issue localized to the B1 appliance or circuit. We can hover over the source column of the alarm and see some detail about the ping attempt. All the warnings are the same. This is telling us that the ping for all three hosts failed. By the way, if you also see red critical many tunnels are down alarms, that indicates that underlays and overlays are also down. See part one of our troubleshooting tunnel down series for help with diagnosing circuit failures and other common situations. Now let's check config IPSLA. As well as seeing the configuration, we can also view the IPSLA status of each tracker. Note how each IPSLA reports down. The monitor column shows the destinations configured and they are gray meaning we can't edit them here. These IPSLA trackers are automatically generated by the Business Intent Overlay Manager. We'll come back to that in a moment. Next, we'll test those destinations and that DNS is working. In a CLI session or SSH to the appliance, let's try to ping those destinations. We'll use the ping utility with minus capital I to select interface WAN0 and the destination to ping. Okay, so we either have a DNS failure or an error in the FQDN. Let's try it again without the typo. Now our responses are seen. This confirms two things. DNS resolution works and the full path to the internet destination is also good. If we still got a DNS error after correcting the typo, then we should check DNS has been configured on administration DNS and reachability to those DNS servers is good by pinging them in the CLI. Of course, pings to the specified IP probe destinations should work regardless of DNS. Let's try that. And again, after correcting the typo. To recap, we validated DNS and the network path over the WAN0 interface and identified errors in the IPSLA configuration. To fix the problems with the destinations, let's examine config business intent overlays and open an overlay. It doesn't matter which one as IPSLA probe settings are global across all overlays. Click on the edit pencil next to break out locally using these interfaces. Here we find the IPSLA settings, which created those grayed out rules we saw earlier on config IPSLA. In the address field, Let's correct those typos. Save and OK. Orchestrator will now push out those IPSLA settings to all appliances immediately. It may take a few minutes for this to complete. Did all the alarms clear? All the blue warnings disappeared, 
and in monitoring alarms we can see the IPSLA warnings have gone. But there is still a critical alarm on B1. Let's bring up config tunnels to see more detail. We can see one pass through tunnel is in admin down state. Let's fix that. Great, all alarms are now cleared. We can check monitoring flows to see if internet flows are breaking out again. You can elect to reset any flows in the policy drop state or let them re-establish naturally. New flows using a breakout tunnel will show as using a tunnel named passthrough underscore label underscore overlay, whereas a flow using backhaul will show as using an overlay tunnel. Let's talk about something different now. All pass-through tunnels are up and available, but internet flows aren't working. They aren't policy dropping either. As mentioned earlier, we should check config IP SLA to ensure that tunnel monitoring is enabled and that the SLA is up in green. Check monitoring flows and the detail I button to see how the flow was handled. Was the flow correctly identified as an internet flow? Check the internet flag is yes. And if not, check the internal subnets list on config business intent overlays. If the destination subnet is listed there, it will be treated as an internal flow. Was NAT applied to the flow? If your clients are privately addressed, you may see flows matching an outbound pass-through tunnel, but no data is coming back. Tunnel none is seen in the inbound direction. Check the NAT tab and verify source NAT was applied. If it wasn't, check config deployment and verify that stateful plus SNAT mode has been enabled on the WAN interface. Another possibility to consider is the destination is just not reachable. If other destinations are working fine, then perhaps it is down, being dropped by a third party device policy, or there is a temporary routing failure somewhere. You'll see the same symptoms as the NAT example, a pass through tunnel for outbound and none for inbound. Running trace route from the CLI may help you gather evidence to determine where along the path the problem lies. Comparing two trace routes suggests the hop at 192.168.1.254 is dropping or unable to route the packets. To wrap up, the troubleshooting checklist is check monitoring alarms to determine the scope of the issue, check flow handling in monitoring flows and the detail I pop up, verify no interfaces or tunnels are set to admin down, confirm basic connectivity to the internet either by manually pinging from the relevant WAN interface, or the IP SLA, if correctly configured, will do this for you. Internet breakout has been configured on at least one overlay. The internal subnets table does not have the destination subnet present. IP SLA is not marking the pass-through tunnel as up, IP SLA disabled. Internet breakout pass-through flows should now be working. This concludes the troubleshooting process. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.